I wanted to talk about something, but I'm feeling so nervous for some reason. It's not like a huge deal. Anyway, okay. Um, I guess trigger warning for trauma, thinking your life is over, stuff like that. Okay. When I was pretty little, I started to feel like I would not make it past like 15 or 16. I thought I was going to die pretty early. I had a very overwhelming sense of dread all the time. I had like trauma going on and that led to more trauma and that led to more trauma. So it was just like, I don't know, it was tough. Um, I think my outlook for my life was that it was always going to be a struggle. It was always going to be really hard. I would meet people who seemed like they really were light, that they had an uncomplicated life, that they were you know, whatever they wanted to do, they felt like there were no barriers to that. They were just, you know, whether that be like emotional barriers or physical, whatever, they were just like, life is my oyster, you know? And I didn't feel like that. I just felt like I was in a very narrow box. Um, my actions, my situation, things had just proven it over and over that I had, like, I was confined. And so that was, that was troubling to me. I won't go into it a ton, but as I got older, as I was like a teenager and stuff, I started to do a lot of drugs. I was self-harming and, you know, doing a lot of things because I just didn't have a lot of uh, value in who I was. I felt very broken. I felt like I didn't have much to live for anyway. Like I literally was around and kept waking up each day and doing each day because I did not want to hurt the people who loved me so much. Like their love was enough to keep me going, but I did not have love for myself to keep myself going. But then I started to get a little bit older and I saw possibility, if not for myself, for my children, because I had a daughter when I was pretty young, I was 20 when I had her, and I began to see there was a future for me because there was a future for me being her mom, loving her, so like she became my mission. I got older and I found, you know, just that I really enjoyed relationships. I loved the people in my life. I tried to really pour a lot of effort into that, but I was still not really living for myself. It was very much um, for who I was to other people. That was fulfilling to me, it had nothing to do with me as a person. It was just like my role in people's life. Anyway, I had a major, um, nervous breakdown when I, in 2016, like at the beginning of 2016, because a whole bunch of stuff that I had repressed popped back up. And that was like the worst, the worst thing ever. At that point I had three children and I was feeling like pretty a-okay with how I had been doing things, which was to stuff everything that I felt and like outward facing be who people wanted and needed me to be. I felt very comfortable with that dynamic. I felt kind of self-satisfied because I was like, I am conquering this. And then I honestly think that like that stuff became unrepressed because I finally got to a point where like that was just part of my journey. I needed to, to deconstruct some stuff and start living more authentically. So anyway, that happened. It was very, very miserable for a, a while and thankfully I have a pretty incredible husband who um, let that process be what it was for me. He let me just have that time. I quit my job and stuff. So he just, he handled everything while I kind of worked through that. And then it seems crazy that that was like eight years ago. Wow, that seems so crazy. Anyway. But I started to realize the importance of doing things that were for me, for um, like learning to love myself and not just love the fact that I was a mother, to um, be interested in what I like to do instead of, you know, facilitating what other people like to do all day long. And, you know, just like allowing myself to be a human being with emotions, like I still really have a long way to go because... I still many times don't know how to be in my body. I don't know how to communicate like the way I'm feeling in myself. Like there's just two parts that don't seem to know how to totally get on the same page all the time, but I've gotten way, way better. And 
I, this this whole thing has been heavy on my heart because I, I don't know, like I'll think about stuff that I'm doing now and I'll think, I never in my wildest dreams would I imagine that I would be at a place where I was taking care of myself because I wanted to, because I like myself. Um, and like just seeing how far I'd gone from someone who really didn't think there was much shot for me to having a lot of dreams, a lot of goals. My heart was just kind of feeling um, like I wanted to put this out there because I know that there are so many people who are in that position where you're just like, I don't, I don't know if I can keep going. It's like one day at a time, one second at a time, trying to just, you know, keep yourself going and really believing that you're doing it for other people because you don't know, like it's not for you. You don't think that there's anything for you. So I just wanted to make this video for anyone who is thinking like that because there is so much for you. And I wanted to show you and talk about a couple of things that have happened in my life uh, recently because I just keep putting in the work. It's, it's never a ton of work at one time because I have a lot of kids and responsibilities and stuff, but I keep putting in the work to love myself and try to like know myself better. So um, here are some things. Here are some things, they may not seem like a lot to many people, but to me it's like I am just shocked and amazed by the life that I have created for myself. The first big thing that I did that was for myself was I started a YouTube channel. I started it in, I think October of 2018. And um, for someone who was like so seriously insecure and like, didn't know who I was, like trying to be on film all the time, come up with ideas and just be transparent was an enormous risk. And I felt I would have panic attacks every time I posted for like a year and a half. Um, but I just kept doing it, even though it felt terrible because I had wanted to do that for a really long time. I love creative things like um, filming and editing and I am someone who wants to make connections with people and like it's sometimes hard for me in real life. So like doing that over a platform, like through my content was a really big thing. I also went to college. I graduated, um, <laughs> of course I went back to college and I graduated um, during the pandemic. So I didn't actually have like a graduation or anything, but that was fine because I probably wouldn't have gone anyway but I finished something. I never, you know, before that, I just wouldn't finish anything that challenged me too much because I really didn't want to be prove, proven right if I was going to fail. And I didn't want to be also proven right if I was successful because that would mean that I just had to put myself out there more. And like, if I can do it, then I can do all these other things. I prefer to think of myself as like a failure. And so I got my degree all while um, parenting children and doing YouTube, actually. And I had a job. During the pandemic, I was kind of kick-ass. We put in a pool. Um, I dyed my hair a million different colors, like half the nation. Let my kids dye their hair. We watched shows that were just, I just let myself be a kid. I bought roller skates. We were watching, um, I'm gonna think of the name and put it right here. But we watched that as a family. It was so fun. Later on, we found out about, uh, I have a family member that had some children that and things were just going real haywire for them. And um, so we took their kids in. We ended up actually then bringing their baby home from the hospital at two days old. And then we ended up adopting all three of those children, which is something that like, before I just had such limited bandwidth. And I, the more I kept focusing on myself and like, trying to be a kid and having fun and just what do I enjoy in life, um, the more my heart just seemed to expand and the more I thought was possible. So that was uh, pretty, pretty amazing. And then I have always lived in the Houston area my whole entire life. I've barely traveled and one of the biggest things that I've always wanted was to travel and live different places and just experience, that's a way that I feel I can experience life. Um, it's just always been a goal. So we moved, we picked up our five children um, and we moved to Portland, Oregon. And that was an amazing adventure. 
And once we got here, I found out what I've always known. I always figured that if I was out of the heat and humidity, the heat and humidity, that I would be like a huge like outdoor person. And I am. I go on walks almost every day now. And I'm like finally getting stronger. I am a morning person now, which that's the most shocking thing probably of all of this. I have to go back a little. I started a TikTok channel um, during the pandemic in January of 2021. That has almost a million followers on that account, which is pretty crazy. I created a cleaning system, which I mean, literally thousands of people have used and, and it's changed their life. It's changed my life. I created a second YouTube account, which is the one you're watching right now. I make digital products. I made my own um, shop. I have like an online shop. I create a blog. I got like all these different things that I'm doing that I never would have thought possible ever. If I wouldn't have taken steps to invest in myself and try to get to like myself and try to get to know myself. So that's been absolutely incredible. So I just wanted to make this video to tell you that if like you are struggling so hard and you don't think that there is more ahead of you, like it's always just going to be this head down groundhog's day, just trying to make it. It's not always going to be like that. It doesn't always have to be like that. If you don't like yourself, if you talk badly to yourself, if you don't give yourself respect, it doesn't have to be like that. And it's not going to change real quickly. It's just, something, especially the more you have like harmed yourself by not believing yourself um, and just treating yourself really crappy. Um, it does take longer, but it is so, so worth it. And I just really want to encourage you to choose yourself in any little tiny way you can. If you keep doing it in whatever tiny little way you can, it will get bigger. It will get easier. You will strengthen the muscle that is necessary to see life differently, to see yourself differently. And there's nothing, there's nothing that you could have done. There's no amount of ways that you could have hurt yourself or others that means that you should not have a life that is beautiful. You do not have to keep punishing yourself. I guarantee you, you've punished yourself enough. Just give yourself the opportunity to believe that it is possible that a different way of living, a different way of thinking could happen, could be for you because it was for me. And I, I know that there are people who have far more trauma than me and who have had like far more obstacles and everything like that. But I really did not think that I was worth anything. And, um, I do now, <laughs> I do, I do now. Anyway, I know that we don't know each other, but I believe in you, I know you can do it, and feel free to put something in the comments or email me if you just want to vent or if you just want to maybe say out loud something that you've been afraid to say that you want for yourself. Just, just take a step if you can that shows yourself that you have even a tiniest little inkling that things are going to be different and that they can be different. Thank you for bearing with me as I stuttered through that and I'll talk to you next time.